Always thought it would be really great to own a bookstore. When we looked at this bookstore, all the stars aligned perfectly. What this store really sells is words, millions of words. We just package them in little things called books. When we bought this bookstore, one of my friends said, you are either the craziest or the dumbest person I've ever met. And this was the kind of store that didn't really compete with um, the big box stores. And so we felt like we really wanted to try and see if we could make a go of this. Um, we knew we could, it was within our reach financially. And since we love books, we just said, let's go for it. If we fail, it's just going to be the two of us. So, um, so we went for it and it's about eight years later and we've loved every minute of it. I've been in the printing business before we bought the store for 30 years, and I managed printing companies, small, medium sized. And uh, a good friend of mine had a company, and he was looking for a manager. Uh, so he, you know, we made, we ag agreed to a price, and I went to work for him, and Jan was working there. We were working in a big office. It was a building downtown, and it was a big open office. And she was in the stripping department, and she was in my line of sight, opaquing a negative. She had her head down. She was on a light table. It's very fine, very exacting work, and she was working away. And I looked up, and... I was doing all the manager stuff, talking on the phone and ordering things and writing up orders. And every time I looked up, she was in the same position. She hadn't moved. And this went on for about 10 or 15 minutes. Finally, I got up and I walked over and I leaned down and I said, are you all right? And she jumped back and she went, oh, I was on a 10 minute break. She had been sleeping with the loop in her eye. My life changed when I met Bob because I had this wonderfully funny man in my life again. But actually, we work together and he has a very, he became my manager at a printing company I worked at. But he was just a very encouraging person and um, made, you, made me like what I was doing and want to do better. There are a lot of books. I mean, there are a lot of books out there. They come from a lot of different places. Uh, we mostly we get them and, and we buy them uh, for the most part uh, or we trade. And, and of course, trading is great because no money passes. Uh, and they get a better, they get a better percentage in trade. Uh, and we get a chance to turn our inventory over without spending any money. But they come from a lot of different sources. People who have collected, I mean, we have people who, oh, they collected Civil War books. We bought a collection. It took us three years to buy a collection. I mean, over three years. Uh, from a guy who was a, a big-time Civil War collector. He was, you know, his great-grandfather had been in the Confederate Army, and, you know, you get a lot of that around here. First editions, signed first editions. There are so many varied interests out there. It's, it's really remarkable. Uh, we always say that there, every book has an owner just waiting to come in to find it. 
the most valuable book so far that and we didn't acquire it this woman brought it in because she found it in her grandmother's things in the attic it was a signed copy of hard times by charles dickens a first edition first printing and it was inscribed to thomas carlyle so she shows us this book and it's got written on the first free end paper to my friend thomas from the author charles and then on the inside front cover is thomas carlyle's book plate so it's definitely from his library i said to her where did you get this book she goes well it was my grandmother i said well where did she get it she goes i have no idea is it worth is it valuable? I said, it's a one of a kind. And uh, she said, well, how, how much do you think it's worth? I said, I have no idea. I mean, it's, it's not scarce. It's not rare. It's unique. I said, but I can tell you hundreds of thousands of dollars. So she asked me if I should, she should sell it. And I said, well, you know, if you need the money, sell it. I said, but... Just remember, whatever you sell it for today, it's going to be worth more tomorrow. I was reading the paper and came across an article about vintage books and Bob and Jan. And um, I thought that sounded pretty interesting. And I came over and walked through the store and met Bob and found that Bob is also from Pennsylvania and from the coal mining area, so we had a lot of things in common. And we also have in common the fact that we are compulsive readers. Uh, I've read two books a week for every week of my life that I can recall. I just, I love reading, I love learning. I stop by, I'm by myself, uh, I live nearby, and I like to be able to talk with some people, and I really like to learn, and where do you find more knowledge than in a bookstore? But rather than just sit home and stare at the wall, I like to come here and, and uh, learn what I possibly can. And the people are just fantastic. People who read are not mean, they like to learn. There's a couple of things that we really make a point of doing. We, we greet everyone who comes in the door say hello to them. We like books and we like people who like books and so we like to make it a friendly uh, experience. You know, you want to you want to buy from someone that you like or who likes you or you feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, nobody likes to go to the grouchy guy down the street, right? And and buy a book because a book is you know, it's just not a can of beans. A book is you know, and it's not just a paper and ink. It's, it's an experience that, that they've thought about it and they're going to read it and they're going to remember it and they may keep it. So it's important to connect with uh, the people who come in to buy books, and, and we try to do that. And we also try to make it a community center. You know, it's, we've met a lot of really, really interesting, fun people, and we almost feel like it's kind of a community service to have this place. People come here just to hang out. Um, we don't mind if they sit and read and they don't buy a book right away. Um, we just want this to be a place where people can feel a sense of community, and we think that's really important nowadays when you don't get that in too many places. Oh, the open mic night was started about two years ago. So we have it the third Saturday of every month. And it's from seven to nine, uh, seven-ish to nine-ish. You know, we always say seven, but it usually doesn't get started till about 7.30. And we have light refreshments and, you know, a little wine, soft drinks and water and that sort of thing. And people come and they read poetry that they're writing or they read stories that they're writing. And in the beginning, you know, only a few people showed up. But then it started to grow. And uh, we get 30 35 people every time, and 10, 11 people want to read. But uh, it's um, it's pretty good. Uh, we enjoy it, and we we get some pretty good writers. I mean, the, the quality of the writing is surprisingly good. Um, so we just keep doing it. It's kind of a way to promote the store. Um, 
and give back to the community. Just about every day around four o'clock, I'll come in, have a little cup of tea and sit and we talk, tell some jokes. I know all the cats by name. We didn't plan on having five cats in the store. Uh, when we first bought the bookstore, there was a feral colony outside, and, and there were probably 20 cats out there. And then a friend of mine called me from Gwinnett County, and he said, Bob, I'm trying to feed this stray kitten that's been hanging around the back door, and uh, I must not be doing something right because he keeps getting skinnier and skinnier. I said, do not bring me that cat. He's like, Bob, you've got to take care of this cat. Otherwise, she's going to die. I said, I have enough cats. I don't need another cat. Do not bring me that cat. Sure enough, the next day, he showed up in a box. And she was just a little tiny thing. And <laughs> I named her Mickey because I always liked that name. And it turns out that she's a Turkish Angora. She's this gorgeous cat. And she was sick. That's why she was getting skinnier and skinnier. So we got that taken care of. And I kind of nursed her through her sick period. So she imprinted on me. So I'm her person. I'm her staff. You know how it is with cats. Dogs have masters. Cats have staff. And I'm her staff. And actually, the cats are kind of a neat thing. I mean, what's a bookstore without a cat? We really, they're just a great addition to the whole um, atmosphere of the store, and they are our babies. You know, people come here just to see the cats sometimes, and we're fine with that. We love that. So, we love our cats. <laughs> I never realized how hard it is to run a bookstore. You think you just walk in and take a book off the shelf. I, I come in and I see people uh, coming in, um, like Sydney, cleaning up the books, cataloging them. There's always something going on. The books are always here. And they, the books go out, but the books always come back in. It takes a tremendous amount of uh, attention. This store is open seven days a week. I mean, how many businesses do you know that are open on a Sunday? But they are because that's when the people come in. And to me, it's not just selling books. You're passing on knowledge. And the more knowledge we have, the more we understand each other, the nicer the world should be. We, we remain confident that uh, physical books will, will stay around for a long time. Um, there are just too many, I mean, books on photography, books on art, specialty, specialty presses uh, on esoteric subjects like horror and fantasy and things like that you still can't figure out how to sign a book electronically so I I don't have any doubts myself if you have a passion that's why you get up in the morning that's why you go out that's why you do things if you want to make a great movie that's a passion you're all involved in producing something good follow that and develop it Get involved, give yourself a reason to get up, whatever that might be. I'm kind of happy the way we are, you know, and um, uh, I think my wife is. We enjoy coming to work every day. And uh, we always say there's no such thing as a bad day at the bookstore. Exercise your mind. Read. 